One, two. Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to model and render this potion here uh, with Render Man. Um, I'm going to be looking at a couple of different things like uh, getting some good refractions with our liquid um, and our glass and also how to set up the specular highlights on the potion itself so you get that sort of sparkly look to it. So let's jump into ZBrush and quickly model up the potion so we can move into Maya and render it. All right, so here we are in ZBrush. This model is pretty straightforward. So we're just going to start with a sphere. Um, hit T to go to edit mode. We're going to make that a poly mesh 3D. Then we're going to go down to initialize and create a Y cylinder. Uh, I'm going to be mainly using um, our Z modeler for all of this. All right, uh, we'll make sure that symmetry is on the X axis. And I'm just going to, well, I guess we could just scale it like that just to get it to the length that you want roughly. Then at the bottom here, uh, BZM for Z Modeler. We're going to hover over there, hit space and go to the transpose. Select that uh, and then we can just move that point down a little bit. So this will create a nice little curve at the bottom here. So I'll just release that mask. Now you'll notice that the uh, transform tool is all over the joint. Um, if we unlock that and then just hit the reset orientation and then the uh, home button we can get to the center again and relock it so uh, if we get smooth subdivision d we can just see what's going on here so i'm going to add another uh edge loop here so uh, hold down space single edge loop and just get that to be sort of roughly the silhouette that you want it i want it something like that i'm going to turn off smooth subdivisions for a moment and we're going to add in another edge loop at the top here this is going to be the sort of rim of it uh, we're going to go to Q mesh poly loop and just make sure that see the line facing to the right it's going to create a poly loop in that direction rather than on the Y axis and if you smooth subdivide that's not going to look correct so we'll add in a, another edge loop roughly there and you can just sort of decide how big you want that rim to be I think that's going to look okay so we're just going to roll with that then uh, we can Q mesh a polygroup island. Just send that down. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to do slightly different. So what I'm going to do is um, split this because I just want a bit better edge there. And then on that uh, on that edge there, you can see it's creased. You can see the double line. We'll uh, go to crease. Um, edge loop complete and then we'll just hold down alt and get rid of that creasing and then we uh, will Q mesh a polygroup island move that down just make sure that that's smooth subdividing nicely yep now the problem is here that it becomes a bit um, I can turn off turn off our symmetry for a second it becomes a bit difficult to see where the uh, that internal bottom is so Turn on smooth subdivide again. Uh, turn on symmetry again. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so I'm going to hover over that poly group that's in the center there. I'm just going to turn on perspective so this makes a little bit more sense to look at. Uh, so we'll hover over that. We'll go to transpose and poly group island, and we'll just click on that, and then we'll just hit the uh, go to unmask center so we can see. So that's going to be directly on that uh, that poly group island in the center there, which is going to be the internal bottom, and then we'll just move that down to there I don't want it too close to where it um, where it starts to curve because it may uh, start to clip a little bit you could you could add another uh, edge loop on the inside there to to make sure it's a bit harder at the bottom there I might even do that so I'm just going to go insert single edge loop unmask it Yeah. All right. So now, if I um, control shift alt, you should see that the face is at the bottom there, which is where I want it. Cool. So that is the main part of the uh, potion bottle done. So we're just going to call that glass. And we're going to append a new sphere. And we're going to initialize that.
and we'll turn on transparency uh, and we'll turn off perspective and we're just going to scale that in so it's on the inside we might have to make some further adjustments uh, once we're in Maya and I'm just going to mask that bottom part there and then just going to move that down and then invert the mask and move that up to wherever you want the top of your potion uh, liquid to be unmask that and I'll smooth subdivide that so I'm going to add another edge loop in there um, when we're in Maya we're going to want to make sure that this potion liquid is actually intersecting the inside edge of the glass uh, just so we can get a bit of a bit better looking refraction all right and then we will insert an edge loop here and then we'll go to QMesh Polygroup Island holding down shift um, and what I'm sort of trying to get here is a viscosity of the liquid so it, there's a bit of a lip um, going up don't know how easy that's going to be to see on the video but it's just a it's just a very fine bit of um, adjustment that I've made just so that edge is a little bit higher than the center there um, just a small detail that can improve the overall look of the liquid so yeah once you're happy with that I think I'm gonna sort of go with that um, we will rename that sub tool to be called potion actually I'll rename it to be called liquid and we just want to make sure that we've got the right uh, subdivisions on these so this is at 90 um, 90 polygons so I might just divide that in control D I want it to be pretty smooth so um, 1410 this is the only thing in the in the scene so I'm not worried about it being too high polygon um, that's gonna be fine for that one and then we'll go to the then we'll uh, delete the lower of that go to the potion and we'll do the same divide that until we get it to a smooth subdivision that we like and then we'll delete the lower cool all right so that is going to be our little container so we're just going to export those now just using Z plugin it's up here on the shelf if you don't have it mounted like I do uh, we'll just go to subtool master and export and then click OK and export it to wherever you want so I'm just going to call it potion underscore and then the um, subtool name is going to be appended to the end there hit save and those are exported All right, let's uh, jump into Maya and have a look at rendering this up okay so I've already saved my scene and set my project so we're just going to um, import our models like so and you'll see them there so I'm just going to turn on wireframe mode for a moment and just check that the um, I'm getting the potion liquid to be sort of intersecting that wall of glass so you can see it's not happening here at the bottom so I'm going to fix that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new layer temporarily and add a selected object so that's going to be the glass and then I'm just going to change that to reference and now I can just select this uh, liquid layer and we'll go to the side view and we'll turn on wireframe so actually no it is it is actually um, on the outside but it's not wide enough so so I believe that's the wall there so we'll just make that a bit bigger it does get a little bit hard to sort of keep track of with all these wireframes but that's the internal poly loop there for the for the glass and then that's the potion there and then there's an external poly loop there so it's just on the inside I'll double check when I render it but that should be cool uh, then we're going to make sure that this is a bit closer to the bottom of the internal part so we'll go to vertex select all those and move them up you don't want it to be crazy far away or it'll look wrong but um, if you get it just outside of it uh, the refraction will work a little bit better 
All right, so I'll select those and change them to smooth subdivision. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly create a backdrop here. Okay, so I've got the background in and I've got a simple light there. I'm just gonna increase that to 25. Okay, so select our glass. We're gonna create a Pixar surface shader. Go to the Hypershade editor. And we'll change that to be called Pixar glass. Turn the diffuse channel off, increase refraction and reflection, keep the roughness at 1.0 and the refractive index at 1.5. And that is how you do glass. It's just that simple. More interestingly though, we'll select the potion, create another Pixar surface. And we'll call this one uh, liquid. And um, we're gonna do a couple of things here. I'll just use the attribute editor on the right here. So uh, we don't want any diffuse. We do want it to be transparent. And we're gonna change refractive color. So this is gonna be the color of your potion. So I'm gonna make mine purple. Um, you can make it as saturated or unsaturated as you like. I'm gonna make it a little bit less saturated. Um, and I'm also gonna create a glow using the same color. And um, I'll just make the gain 0.5 on the glow. And um, why don't we take a little render and see what's happening. All right, it looks like our internal liquid is clipping incorrectly on the bottle, just on that top part there. Um, bottom part looks okay though. So I'm just gonna go in and fix that. Okay, so I'm not quite sure where it is. So what I'm gonna do is select uh, edge and I'm just using uh, soft selection so hitting B and I'm gonna select that edge loop near the top there and then I'm just gonna if I hold down B I can increase the amount it's affecting I think that is roughly where it was yeah and then I'm just gonna scale that and hopefully that fixes the problem seems to have done it but it does look a bit funny in the center there now as well so I'm just gonna scale that as well there we go fixed it um so the potion overall was probably just a little needed to a little bit more diameter but um if you see that happening on your render now you know how to fix it so that's fine the potion looks you know pretty pretty good um we can add one more thing uh, to this particular render before we finish it up though um, i'm just going to make it look a little bit glittery so what i'll do is uh, back in the Hypershade editor, the Pixar liquid. Now you'll see, you would notice I've used this uh, in the last tutorial, I think, as well, um, using the uh, Pixar flakes. So what I'm going to do is type in hit tab and hit Pixar dot Pixar uh, facing ratio, and then we're going to do a Pixar flakes. All right. So the result f is going to go to the flake amount. And then um, we're going to have the facing ratio set to camera 0, 1, 0, that's fine. And the gamma at 1, that's fine as also. Uh, we're going to run the result in out into the specular bump. So just select that node, hit 3 to expand it, type in spec, um, and look for bump, specular bump normal. Result n goes into specular bump normal. So this is going to um, create a bump map for the specular channel. <clears throat> uh, based on the flakes, which is um, check out the um, the frying pan tutorial if you want to know a little bit more about the, the Pixar flakes. I use them there. So we're going to increase that to be white. Um, the roughness can be whatever you want. I'll probably 0.05, so it's quite sparkly. And then we'll hit IPR, and you can see now that the um, now we're getting the uh, a bit of variation the specularity of our potion which is a little bit more interesting to look at um, i think the flakes are probably a little bit big so i'm going to jump back into them flex size 0.05 probably a bit small point maybe 0.8 um, and we'll increase the frequency to like 150 so there's a lot of them yeah so that's a little bit more interesting and um, also don't be afraid of also changing the color to something crazy like green or you know blue or something um, because it's such a small specular area it's it's a little bit difficult to tell but um, it will just zhuzh it up just a little bit um, I'm gonna go with green I think 
you can see the green affecting it more sort of towards the bottom there uh, not necessarily on the highlights but on some of the the uh, flakes that would be not quite facing the camera um, it is just it making a small change there um, so that is it for the potion very simple um, I'll do another one to another tutorial on the potion uh, at a later date uh, we're going to do some maybe uh, emission from the top of the potion uh, to make it look like it's smoking or something like that and maybe we'll go even further and create a little uh, lab scene or something I don't know uh, let me know what you think in the comments and um, I will strive to do something but uh, if you like the tutorial make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube and if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of tutorials just like this one every week for products like RenderMan and ZBrush and other 3D products as well uh, if you want to stay up to date even further check out the Facebook page link in the description that's it for now though thank you very much for watching and happy rendering